I really need to stop wearing tube tops on the days that I film because when I was holding my camera like this, I was just gonna do a quick little like video, I realized that it looks like I was naked. So, this is just proof. I am not naked right now, I am wearing a tube top. It's one of my favorite type of shirts to wear, I don't know, I like the open shoulders. Um, anyways, so let's get going with today's video. This is gonna be a short, quick, sweet, to the point video, but as always, hopefully something that just gives you a little inspiration for today or helps you understand something a little bit clearer so that you can take one step forward on your journey to getting your period back and transforming your relationship to food. Before we get going with today's video, I would love to introduce you to the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it that will notify you when I come out with a new video. I've been coming out with a day in my life type of videos, and so if you want to get to know me better and see what a day in the life of someone recovered looks like, then make sure you subscribe. So I uploaded a new post on Instagram this morning and I wanted to just talk a little bit about it and I wanted to talk about a comment that was made about it as well. So the post is this, it says, so you're eating quote unquote healthy because you're afraid of heart disease, high cholesterol and cancer and yet not having a period greatly increases your risk of developing these things. Whew, this was something that I needed to hear and I needed to understand. I think a lot of people don't understand this. So I'm also going to read the caption of this post as well. So I said, oh, the irony of it all. By the way, I'm reading, it's on my computer screen right here. Um, it says, you do all these things, sprout your quinoa, exercise daily, stay away from processed food, hoping that this will save you from a wide array of diseases. And yet many fail to understand that by not having a monthly menstrual cycle, you increase your risk of all of these things. Yes, many people suffering from an eating disorder or from being in energy debt have high cholesterol, despite the fact that they are hardly eating any cholesterol. This happens a lot with my vegan clients that come to me and they're like, I just went to the doctor, got my lab results back, like I have super high cholesterol, but I've been vegan for four years, like what the heck, like do I need to eat even like less cholesterol, it's like, no, you're not even eating any cholesterol now, so that's not the issue. Um, and then yes, one's uterine and breast cancer risk increases even though they don't have any hormones kind of the problem. Um, and yes, heart disease is common in those suffering with an eating disorder because your electrolyte balance can be all off and women with HA have been shown to have impaired endothelial function. So I totally understand your desire to reduce your risk of various diseases, which is why I'm making this post so that you understand that by having amenorrhea, you are increasing your risk for said things, not decreasing it. That's super important. Can I say that again? <laughs> I totally understand your desire to reduce your risk of various diseases. Totally, 100%. I don't want any of my clients to get diabetes or cancer or anything, right? Like, totally understand that you wouldn't want to put your body at risk for that. But I'm making this post so that you understand that by having amenorrhea, living in energy debt, living in a low metabolic state, increases your risk for said things, not decreasing it. So I think this is just super, super um, important to understand. I wish I knew, I wish I knew that like, yeah, by not having a period, I don't know, I had this idea in my mind that like, oh, I don't have a period, meaning I'm never gonna be at risk for like breast cancer or for cervical cancer or anything like that because I thought, oh, I have no hormones so it's impossible for things to go awry. No, everything's going awry. You need hormones. Your body's designed to work with hormones. They're chemical messengers in your body. It's so important that we have them. Um, it keeps everything in balance and in check. And when the hormones, like especially the reproductive hormones are off, your progesterone and your estrogen, that's going to increase your risk for a lot of diseases. So what's actually really interesting, I want to talk about the heart one for a second. So estrogen actually plays a vital role in the elasticity of our arteries. And so when you are low estrogen, it means that your arteries kind of harden and they're not able to kind of, you know, um, contract and uh, release as easily. So what happens when like a bunch of blood goes through and maybe there's a little bit of clot, what happens now? Your arteries are like, they're hard. They can't, they can't move. There's not enough estrogen for that. And so now that just gets stuck and that's how you have heart complications or a heart attack, right? Um, or even a stroke, like a stroke can be due to that. Um, and that's where you'll develop heart complications and heart problems. 
because you were low estrogen. Like, it was insane when I started realizing how many things were starting to go wrong, like seriously wrong, like the, the, the high cholesterol and the heart disease and all that, like those things I was putting my body at severe risk for by continually keeping it in an amenorrheic state and not nourishing it enough. So then I, I want to just uh, mention the comment that someone wrote here, which was, it's a great comment. She said, there's nothing wrong with eating healthy as long as you're eating enough calories and eating all three nutrients. And I'm like, yes, exactly. Kind of my point. And that's why I put healthy in these uh, quotation marks on the post, because when people say the word healthy, I think most people automatically think raw veggies, salads, and like not eating hardly anything, right? Like that's what we think of as healthy or doing like a juice cleanse or things like that. Thank you diet culture. Thank you the societal messaging that we've received for years thinking that that is what's healthy. Um, and so I'm not against someone eating healthily, like not at all. In fact, this is what I help my clients do is like, let's understand what a healthy diet looks like. Not in an obsessive manner, but yeah, let's understand what foods are gonna be super supportive for your body. Um, and so, you know, if someone is anti-diet culture, it doesn't mean that they're anti-health, and that's such an important thing to just mention. I'm not anti-health in any way, shape, or form. I'm all for health, which is why I'm all for redefining what healthy and like a healthy diet is, because we've been told it's one thing, but then in reality, it leads to a completely different thing for many of us. It leads to a decline in health, and so yeah, we gotta redefine what healthy is, and um, you know, to me, healthy is not eating just a bunch of vegetables and you know, large amounts, right? Or restricting yourself. No, healthy is eating a well balance of like everything, of getting in your animal products, your meat, your fish, your seafood, all of that, and then getting in also your eggs and your cheeses and your dairy and getting your veggies and getting your fruit and getting your potatoes and your breads and things like that. Like I'm all just for an overall like balance and um, understanding that food is not the enemy and food like butter or cheese or eggs like if they're here to support our health um and yeah so i i just wanted to make that clarification because i think a lot of us think this way like oh anti-diet culture, anti-health. Oh, and it's like no 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 i just understand how restrictive eating does not equal health and so we gotta we gotta understand that yeah incorporating other foods and even incorporating some processed food god forbid right um is not gonna be damaging to your health rather you know especially if you're coming from an um, amenorrheic state eating processed food can to be quite honest just be kind of really helpful it's a lot of calories it's highly palatable it goes down easily and um it provides the body with like those carbs that it needs, the sugars that it needs and everything. So again, I'm not saying eat copious amounts of donuts every single day and you know, don't ever eat a fresh salad or anything like that. Like no, never, ever, ever. I'm just saying, hey, having a chocolate croissant, having a donut, having like a piece of cake, like that's not ruining your health when you focus primarily on eating nutrient dense foods and not just eating a bunch of salads um, and thinking that that's healthy. So I, I go the route of like, instead of, let's, let's put it this way. I like this analogy. I, I give it with my clients all the time. It's like, okay, you could do one of two things. You could be like, okay, we live in this germ infested world. I can either put myself in a bubble and just like live in a bubble my whole life so that I never encounter a germ, or I can strengthen my body, strengthen my immune system so that I can be out in the world in contact with all of these germs and viruses and I'm healthy. So I see the, the same thing with the food. It's like, okay, either we can go and we can micromanage every single little thing we eat and I'm making sure that everything is purely organic, purely all of that. And I'm not saying organic is bad. I love purchasing organic, okay? But I'm just saying that obsession of like everything, it's like the bubble mentality of it all has to be perfect and clean and yeah. Or you could strengthen your body, strengthen your metabolism so that you have a, you know, a high body temperature, you have balanced hormones, you have um, mental clarity, you have all these things that signify a good metabolic rate, and you can relax with food and understand that, hey, my body's super strong, my body is strong because I eat enough, I'm eating a wide variety, I, you know, I'm not being super restrictive, I'm getting all these nutrient-dense, rich foods into my diet, and so I'm healthy, 
if I go and eat the brownie, that's not affecting me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, my body can handle it. My body's fine. Um, now, again, I'm not saying, and we have to get out of the extremes, I'm not saying go and eat, I'm not saying go and eat brownies for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. No, not at all. If you watch my Instagram post, like, I'm always eating, like, very fresh foods, eggs from my garden. I'm doing, I, you know, drink, like, good quality dairy and, um, I will cook veggies and I use like good quality butter on that. Like I, I eat well. So that, <laughs> let's finish this here. Eat well so that I don't have to worry about eating not well. And I don't want to even say not well because every food has a function. And we've got to understand that there's more to food than just the nutritional value of it and sometimes eating the brownie is healthy just because it's like oh, that was my childhood my mom would have all these brownies for us when we come home from school and it's just it's nostalgia it makes me feel good that's important we have to our health is way more than just what's coming in and out it's also our thoughts our emotions how we feel in this world the amount of autonomy we have at work if we like our work like our intimate relationships all those things affect our health trust me I ask anyone who's like been through a divorce it's a very like such a hard time and so many people like their health just starts going like out of control right like they start losing a lot of their health maybe they're losing hair they're losing sleep they have bad digestive issues like they're breaking out things start happening because yeah they just had a very stressful very like emotionally tormenting like experience right so that's affecting their health that's slowing down the metabolic rate that's increasing cortisol and all of that and so Food, or I should say health, is way more than food, and we always have to keep that in mind. So again, I just wanted to clarify this post and say that when I said healthy, I meant like not something that actually is healthy because I'm not against health. It's the healthy that's under the guise of healthy, if that makes sense. And again, that's going to be like the drinking like green juices all day and like eating a very restrictive low carb diet and things like that. It's like, okay, yeah. Why do we slap the label health on that when it's obviously for so many women not giving them health? Anyways, okay, that's all I'm going to do today. It's so crazy as I look through my channel and I see how many videos I have made. I've done a ton of videos for you guys talking about amenorrhea, how I got my period back, signs to look out for. I talk about diet culture. We talk about leaving veganism and so many other things. So go ahead and take a scroll through my page. Like you can listen to this video about how I got my period back. I'm so excited that you are here today. I have some big news you probably already know because of the title of this video that totally gave it away but my big news is that I got my period I got my period